Apple's new M1 MacBooks have not even been out for a full year yet, and there's already malware for them that's been discovered in the wild. Clearly, the app developers are not the only ones that have been adapting their code to work better on Apple's new chips. In fact, the malware that was discovered to work on the latest MacBooks with these chips is an adaptation of GoSearch, which has been one of the more common malwares out there for macOS for at least the past year. Uh, GoSearch is a lot like your classic browser hijacking malware, so it usually comes bundled with some other software. And once you install it, it changes your default search engine to gosearch.me or whatever URL that they're using these days. And if you try to search for something with a different search engine, like let's say Google or DuckDuckGo, you get redirected to the Go Search result. And this malicious browser extension, it also acts as spyware. So if you get it installed on your MacBook, you now have third-party spyware to deal with that's going to be competing with Apple spyware that's already built in. So Go Search, it can collect your data, uh, including what websites you visit, your keystrokes that you make, and it's also known to produce more pop-ups and banner ads in your web browser. And most of these are going to link to sites that are just going to encourage you to download even more malware and fall for even more scams. Uh, so let's look at the details of this malware on VirusTotal. Uh, this is the hash of the virus, by the way, if you want to uh, look up any of this stuff on your own. Uh, although having the hash of a virus, it doesn't really mean much as far as stopping it. Uh, because these days, most malware is polymorphic. So you can have the same virus run on two different machines and it's going to have different hashes because it can just refactor its code before running on the fly to avoid detection. That's why if you're using an antivirus solution, you really wanna make sure that it's doing heuristic and anomaly-based detection. Uh, so it is a Mako file type. Uh, it of course contains ARM instructions since Apple is using ARM CPUs now. It is 64 bit and it has support for multiple architectures. Uh, and it's signed because macOS Big Sur requires any code uh, from downloaded programs to be signed. And this is supposed to be implemented as kind of a security measure, uh, but obviously it's not a perfect solution because malware can be signed too. Um, now this malware, it does get detected by a lot of different antivirus engines. Right now it's 32 out of 63. Uh, and this is probably going to increase as time goes on because obviously uh, once one antivirus detects it, eventually the other ones kind of figure out how to detect it as well. Uh, but really, this is kind of meaningless because it's malware that's meant to infect Macs. And Mac users, for the most part, don't use antivirus. Just go to any Apple store and ask the geniuses, do I need antivirus on my MacBook? And chances are they're going to tell you no. And antivirus is probably becoming even less common on Macs and just computers in general these days. Um, I know that the decline, there, there's a bit of a decline of antivirus across the board after PCs and Macs removed their DVD drives. Because uh, I remember when I worked at Best Buy, all of the poor boomers, they couldn't understand how to install antivirus software without a disk. And like if you go to Best Buy, they even have like these weird packages that look like they would contain a disk, but then you open it up and it's like, there's no disk, go to this website. Uh, and obviously that confuses the boomer. So usually they would just pay us at Geek Squad to install it for them. That's pretty much what most of my time at Geek Squad was spent doing before we started fixing iPhones, uh, just installing Webroot on people's PCs. Uh, but let's take a closer look at the antivirus engines that detected this, and you'll start to notice a pattern that appears, right? So Go Search, it's pretty much a variation of the infamous Parrot malware, uh, and this has been around for a while, something like five years at this point. Um, so this took advantage of other past security flaws in the Mac environment like AppleScript, but clearly it's still evolving. Um, so Parrot, it had things like persistence, so it would stay on your machine and execute even if you reboot your computer, and GoSearch does the same thing. 
It has sandbox and VM detection. So if this malware finds itself on a virtual machine, uh, it's not going to execute or it just won't do anything malicious until it finds itself in a real environment because that's one of the things that security professionals and antivirus developers do is they'll run actual malware inside of a virtual machine, look at how it behaves and then take that information and use it to uh, create solutions to it. So as I mentioned earlier, this malware does come bundled uh, with some other stuff. I could just do a tree command in the main folder here. Uh, so you'll see there's some other things. There's some JavaScript, uh, some Safari extension because this uh, go search malware, it basically manifests itself as a Safari extension. Uh, that's probably gonna be one of the easiest ways to get malware onto a MacBook these days. Cause of course, software for Macs goes through the Apple store and then Apple checks everything to make sure that, that it's legit. Um, but I'm guessing that the uh, checking that they do for Safari extensions uh, is a lot less or possibly not really existent at all. Uh, let's go into the um, properties of this. Take a look at the properties file. So we can see that it's meant for Mac OS X, um, but not iOS. So it's a bit of a like targeted malware. Uh, it doesn't affect all of Apple's devices. We can take a look at the signature of this, I have it downloaded on my computer. So we can see that it was signed by Hong Shen Yen, hope I'm pronouncing that right, on November the 23rd, 2020 at 1246 AM. This guy was doing some late night development. Uh, so either, you know, obviously malware can be signed as well. <laughs> like it's not really a security measure. Um, I don't know whether this guy who got like the, um, you know, they're not like an actual Apple developer, like it is signed by Apple, but this is a um, signing thing that you apply for when you basically want to write software for Apple. It doesn't mean you're employed by them, just means that you make software for them. Um, I don't know if this is his actual credentials, like if he's actually the one making this malware, or if it's just credentials that were stolen, you know, who knows. Um, but the whole point is that this signature thing doesn't, doesn't really protect you per se. Now, the certificate has been revoked. Um, that's an old screenshot. So if you do, I think the command is like code sign verbose, something like that uh, on a MacBook with the actual malware that I have here, then it's going to tell you that the certificate has been revoked. Uh, so at least Apple is aware of this and they are doing some things about it. Um, but why does all of this really matter? What, what's the big deal? Uh, the deal is that Apple is leading us into the new era of ARM-based mobile computers. Of course, Android phones, they've already had ARM processors, but I'm talking about laptops. Apple is putting ARM laptops into the hands of normal computer users. And you can be sure that Microsoft is going to follow suit. Clearly, these antivirus engines are not that good at detecting ARM-based malware compared to x86-64 malware. Um, the fact that this malware has been around for a while, at least a while as far as malware is concerned, like it literally was in uh, November of last year, and then five plus years when you consider that this is basically Parrot, and only half of the AV engines on here can detect it. Uh, so clearly ARM-based binaries are harder to detect than other ones are. And this is probably because AV engines are not even used to dealing with ARM binaries. You know, like I said, most of the ARM chips are in smartphones right now, and who the hell actually installs an antivirus on their smartphone? Like that's a peak boomer move right there. Um, I'm actually, Really excited to see what malware is like on Microsoft Surfaces or whatever it is that they call their laptops these days once they switch to ARM CPUs as well. It's probably going to be a shit show of malware, sort of like the uh, Windows XP or the Windows 2000 days. Uh, you guys are pretty smart, so I think we all know that Windows 10 is more vulnerable than a drunk white girl walking through a bad neighborhood at night. 
Uh, but anyway, that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, be sure to share it with your friends, enemies, and Apple users alike. Maybe this malware is going to scare them into spilling their lattes. Like, subscribe, and have a great day.